know they got your mans. They got your mans on s assault charges. Yeah, the you be hanging with. The nigga you be hanging with. Oh, it's a fender. And he was your man's. He was your boy. That's crazy, man. You ain't know what he was doing? You ain't feel bad at all? Like, no guilt? None of, none of that. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the channel or the Patreon or wherever this may land. I'm leaning way more towards the Patreon, though, because of the sensitivity of today's topic. I have been parked on YouTube for a good four months, and I'm finally back in good standing, and I just don't want to test the algorithm right now. I'm sorry. Thank you to all my patrons. So, yeah, excuse my appearance right now. It is two in the morning. Morning. As you can see on the screen, we are diving into this Rodney Jones lawsuit against not just Diddy, but everyone near him <laughs> at this point, because what is happening? We have Rodney Jones versus Sean Combs, Justin Dior Combs, Ethiopia. I'm not trying to be ignorant, but I'm not going to pretend that I'm going to pronounce that correctly. Lucian, Charles Grange, Christina Cor- what are- okay, I'm sorry. These people got some names on them though. Am I- is it just me? Chalice Recording Studios, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Combs and Global Enterprises, Jane and Jane Doe's 1 through 10, and ABC Corporations 1 through 10. So those are the unnamed people. Ah. <sighs> I mean, I've seen everybody on here, like, you know, on Twitter and stuff and like talking about the whole Meek Mill thing. Made it my business not to look through these records at all because I wanted to do it with you guys. So I hope you guys are comfortable. This is going to be very long. I can just tell by the pages on here. This is going to be very long. So make sure you got your wine, your water or your rolling tray or whatever you need to tune in with me <laughs> while we get into this Diddy T. Like, who are you <laughs> to close off earth? For legal reasons, if any kids are watching, you're right now. And I don't even want to call this tea. Like, this man is a serial abuser. I'm just, I don't understand. We're seeing a lot of stuff breaking down in front of us in real time. And I feel like not enough people are moved by it. And it's more joking happening than not. But yeah, let's, let's, let's get into this. Starting off strong with a trigger warning. This document contains highly graphic information of a sexual nature, including sexual assault. Additionally, there are graphic images of the aftermath of a shooting, redacted images of intercourse, redacted images of minors, minors, sex workers, and prostitutes, details of sex traffic, tra tra trafficking, sex assault charges, and the illegal distribution of sex and guns. Plaintiff Rodney Jones is an American artist and music producer. Mr. Jones resides in the states of New York and California. Defendant Sean Combs is a rapper and record executive, popularly known by his stage names Puff Daddy, Puffy, P Diddy, Diddy, Brother Love or Love. We've really lived through Diddy and all of his legions. Like, they are legion. Diddy is legion. <laughs> Mr. Combs came to fame in the early 90s with his record label, Bad Boy Records. He rose to prominence in the music and entertainment industry over the decades and is regularly referred to as a hip hop mogul. I think I have his picture right there under it. Defendant Justin Dior Combs, the son of Mr. Combs and Misa Hilton. Jay Combs was born on December 30th, 1993. Jay Combs is a producer and actor. He has appeared on TV series like Catfish, Wildin' Out, and Hip Hop Squares. Lucian Charles Grange is the CEO of Universal Music Group. Ooh ugly man. Ethiopia is the former CEO of Motown Records, the parent company of Love Records. <laughs> Christina is the chief of staff to Sean Diddy Combs, Combs Global Enterprises. Let's get into Mr. Jones, the, the child prodigy. Rodney Little Rod Jones Jr. is from the Windy City, Chi-Town. He was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois, and Mr. Jones is the second oldest son and fourth child out of nine siblings. Mr. Jones comes from a long line of gospel music influencers. Mr. Jones started playing musical instruments at the age of five. At the age of 13, he picked up playing the guitar. From 13 to present day, Mr. Jones has taught himself to play over 13 instruments. Mr. Jones is considered a musical prodigy. His talents have led him to produce and create commercial marketplace for music that has been recorded by some of the most prestigious and highly acclaimed artists in music history. On or about August 2022, Jones received a call from Mr. Combs requesting that he produce several songs Songs on the love album do y'all remember my tweets or my posts when the whole love album rollout was happening and he was in the studio with everybody and he was like this is dedicated to Kim and everything was red and I was like did he change his profile picture to red he's linking up with all these different people he said this was the last time the weekend was gonna do a collab it was just a bunch of stuff happening and I was like y'all this feels like one big sacrifice like one big ritual this album this album itself was a ritual of some sort for Diddy and it's like all backfiring on him 
Mr. Jones agreed and his life has been detrimentally impacted ever since. And he's not the only one. I swear, I've seen so many different people say that this album was like such an eye opener for how much of a devil he really is. And these are people in the industry. So imagine what's in that. From September 2022 to November 2023, Jones produced nine songs on Mr. Combs' love album. Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Combs for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. Mr. Jones also spent several weeks on a yacht, on a yacht, we're gonna get into yachting too. We're gonna get into the whole yachting thing. These celebrities sell y'all this dream and make you think, oh, I wanna be on a yacht, I wanna be, y'all don't know what happens on these yachts. You just see the lifestyle. Throughout his time in Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love Album. The claims raised in this complaint have been corroborated through witness statements, video, audio recordings, and images. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly on several occasions, narcissist. Mr. Combs took Mr. Jones' cell phone and began recording himself. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Mr. Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms. This is, this is a regular Tuesday for the industry. Uh, <laughs> the displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. Ooh, he's snitching. Oh, so we're gonna get into the pictures. We also are provided with proof of C, Mr. Combs providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes. Laced, no consent. Minors, minors? And you're lacing people? The sex workers, are they even consenting at this point? They love to sell this. Oh, we're getting paid. We're getting to the bag. And they completely cut out the whole trafficking part of it. And it happens more than, the, you know, than usual. And they don't even see what they're being put through as trafficking. You literally have someone selling you. They think you got to like be put in a box and like sent across borders or something to be trafficked. Mr. Combs, chief of staff, instructing her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for his consumption. Christian Combs, wait, wait. Christian Combs is the other son. Drugging and sexually assaulting a woman, but his name was not named above. Also, yikes. Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact of his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. Like I said, like I said, back before Cassie's lawsuit even came out. Oh, I'm just saying. This is before we heard anything about Cassie. He was doing his speech at the VMAs or whatever that was. And I said, oh, this sounds like a threat. And let's wait for that T.D. Jakes tea to spill because I already knew that T.D. Jakes was holding all of his secrets and Lorianne Gibson. And I tweeted that too. I was watching Making the Band and I was like, yo, Lorianne, the way she's talking, like it looks like she's so scared of him and like the way she's letting him talk to these girls. Like, I didn't like it. Oh, that's just how things were back then. That's how the industry was. That's how you make good artists. People was really telling me, oh, that no, that's how you make a good artist. It's how you got to scream at them. And da -da -da -da. These new artists, that's why they trash because they don't have ditties. Okay, be serious. Like I literally had to go through that. And I'm so glad that I woke up and was like, all right, yeah, this is not, this is not right. This is not how I was supposed to be treated. Honestly, I probably would still be getting treated like that if it wasn't for my mom. And I'm not even gonna lie. She was really like, you're not supposed to be getting treated like that. And I was like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe, because I was also one of those people like, have you ever watched a, a, a documentary? Have you seen how these people talk? Do you see how they got to whip them in the shape? What's wrong? Bro, shut up. Like, I don't, uh, I'm telling y'all, these people are sick. <laughs> And like, just to see some of this stuff in action, not like, ever, like I, clearly nothing that was in this lawsuit, but like when I recorded Suicide, my intro song for my channel, I recorded that at daddy's house, at Diddy's studio. I was in, I was right there in the building. I was there every other weekend. I hung out there all the time. And then I had got an opportunity to record a song and I was like, oh, okay. Ba -da -da -da. I recorded it with some other people that were in the same thing or whatever. But I'm telling y'all, just being around and the things you see, the things you hear, and the way just people are treated is, that's why everybody's on drugs and like trying to ignore it and like drain it out. Nobody's like, you. and the fact that Diddy's studio was called Daddy's House. I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, when you put my bag Daddy, yeah, I like when you, oh, when oh, you're right scrambling here, right and here. scraping for no, 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 shit. No, no, no. No. Make a that wish, one. just oh, blow no. it out. Your no, birthday no. every day. Where I Look, did you look back me? on where I became. Mm. Did you miss me though? Mm. For real, because we, I'm I saying, miss, it seems like a thing. I miss his birthday with party, Puff, man. Man, I miss but I'm talking about for him. your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? 
I'm, I, yeah, we we party for my birthday before. You came to my party. Because P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you got to tell him no. No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? It didn't sit right with me back then. It doesn't sit right with me now. Yeah, at the time, I was just happy. Like, oh, I'm in rooms with legends. I, this is where this is where Biggie sat. This is where he recorded his song. This is where... Did, like, you know, I, I didn't even meet the man. I've never met Diddy in my life. I will say that right now. But I do know a lot of people who personally know him. And I don't mean like I know them, kind of know him. Like, I know them. So it's just... I told you, I knew your dad for a long time. He did that shit. Guilty as fuck. He's guilty. <laughs> We didn't even get into the lawsuit yet. Rapper redacted on Mr. Combs yacht consorting with underage girls. R&B singer four redacted in Mr. Combs Los Angeles home consorting with underage girls and sex workers. Lord Jesus. So here we get into these people that were named above. Let's see. Okay, so rapper number three redacted was on Mr. Combs yacht consorting with underage girls and sex workers. Number three is a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Okay, so number three was on the yacht consorting with underage girls, sex workers, and the R&B singer who is four, a Grammy award-winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bayesian billionaire, Chris Brown. So Chris Brown and Meek Mill. You know they got your mans. They got your mans on so charges. On or about September 12, 2022, a writers and producers camp at Chalice Records Studio. One evening during this camp, Mr. Combs, Jay Combs, and G were in a heated conversation. That conversation was moved out of the studio into a restroom adjacent to where Mr. Jones was sitting. Mr. Jones was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when gunshots rang out. Mr. Jones recalled hearing multiple gunshots. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and feared that he would be shot next. Mr. Jones genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close he was. After the the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom. When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs exited. G was lying on the floor in fetal position, holding his stomach, bleeding out of his leg hip area. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Mr. Jones lifted G and brought him to the ambulance and studio's front. At this time, Mr. Combs and Justin disappeared to another part of the studio. Mr. Combs gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside of the studio by a drive-by assailant. Los Angeles News, man shot outside party at Hollywood Recording Studio, September 12, 2022. Mr. Jones has the clothing he wore that day and believes it still may have the stains and DNA of G's blood. Oh my God, oh my God. He went home and bagged up the clothes. We are only on page 11. We're literally, we're, we're literally. Mr. Jones has the clothing he wore that day and believes it still may have the stains and DNA of G's blood. The following are screenshots of the aftermath of the restroom where G was shot by either Mr. Combs or J. Combs. Y'all, and I posted this on Twitter earlier. Do y'all remember, I mean, some of y'all might not even follow her, I don't know, but Misa Hilton, who is Justin's mom, she was spiraling la last summer. It was like sometime in June, I believe. She said, act bad. I'm not protecting no one anymore, just my son. I'm not with none of that reality TV shit. When is enough enough? And all the children, I love a come to Jesus moment. And then she put all, like all the children in caps. Then she said, act bad, bad boy. I used to want to be a bad girl. She, remember, look at what she's putting in caps. I chose to be a queen, tried and true. I'm not perfect, but I am intentional. The statement of fish rots from the head down means that. In addition to being a major contributing factor, Actor in a family or organization's success, leadership is also the root cause of its failure and demise. The truth shall set you free. I should have kept my child with me. F U C L A too. Everybody can get it. Not the school. How do you go from one of the greatest to ever do it to making all of your money off alcohol and suing the damn alcohol companies? Sell something healthy that builds people up. I'm sick of it. Everyone has to sit around for years and act like there isn't anything wrong with you. Well, this is where the buck stops for me. If anything ever happened to my son, God forbid, what is anyone going to say to me? We all know whose fault it would be. And Christina, 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 wait, let's wait. Hey, hold on. She said, Christina, Christina, Christina Cora, come to the, we're calling you. Okay, and Christina, if you ever try to handle me again, handle, handle the chief to staff handling situations. I wonder who else she handles. Um, it's always a white woman being in the state. If you ever try to handle me again, I will go straight across your head. Stay out of the way. You are a nice person. Everyone is tough until it's time to be tough. Uh, I do realize clarity and context are important. You want to do reality TV? Okay, let's be real then, starting from the top. So clearly this little rant started with like something, he was doing something for a reality TV show. Clearly we know it's not coming out now because hello. <laughs> 
But the only person she's protecting is her son. If anything happens to her son, God forbid, whose fault would it be? Listen, listen. I don't know. It's a lot of stuff happening. The math is kind of mathing. The, the pictures though, the pictures, this is the aftermath, right? Clearly G was not shot outside of the studio as Mr. Combs instructed his team to report. As a result of this shooting, Mr. Jones is severely traumatized. Mr. Jones now suffers from PTSD, severe anxiety, depression, and insomnia. I'm sure. Mr. Jones was sexually harassed, oh my gosh, and assaulted by Mr. Combs. Throughout his time living with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his anus. Not even the, 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 the cheeks. He was up in, he was up in there. These events took place in LA, New York, Florida. Oh my, what? We are absolutely not here or ever here to victim blame, but why do you keep going back so many times? You gotta tell him no. Oh, just to be on the album? Or was it like, was this all after the, the shooting? Like, were you so scared that you were like, you know, let me just get, get everything done with, I don't. Okay. In addition to the unsolicited and unauthorized touching, Mr. Jones was forced by Mr. Combs to work in Mr. Combs' bathroom as Mr. Combs walked around naked and showered in a clear glass enclosure. As a heterosexual Christian man, when Mr. Jones was uncomfortable with Mr. Combs' advances, he expressed his discomfort to Mr. Combs' chief of staff, Christina. Christina! KK. We gonna call her KK. He expressed his discomfort to KK. KK responded to Mr. Jones' complaint with, you know, Sean will be Sean. I don't know why I just felt like KK would talk like that. KK also attempted to downplay Mr. Combs' groping of Mr. Jones's anus and genitals as friendly horseplay, stating that those acts were Mr. Combs' way of showing that he likes you. Yeah, a little too much. What are we talking about? Despite these assurances on several occasions, several occasions he has brought this to KK's attention and she was just like, ah, uh, no, that's just what he does. Just him showing he likes you. On several occasions, when Mr. Combs began to undress and walk around his house naked, KK would say, okay, I'm leaving now, and she would disappear. So when he's doing it around you, you're like, okay, I'm leaving. But when he does it to other people, it's, oh no, that's just how he likes you. So how much does he like you, KK? Not as much as the boys, I'll tell you that. KK's hypocrisy is breathtaking at best and enabling at worst. Mr. Jones believes that KK aided and abetted Mr. Combs' sexual assault of him and was working with Mr. Combs to groom him into accepting the homosexual relationship. KK the handler. Through these sexually deviant acts, one would say Mr. Combs has a pattern and practice of engaging in such nefarious activity. This ongoing conduct shows that Mr. Combs cannot be rehabilitated. Mr. Combs attempted to groom Mr. Jones into engaging in gay. Mr. Combs was aware that Mr. Jones looked up to and idolized music producer Stephen Aaron Jordan. Stevie J. Stevie J is an American DJ, record producer, and television personality. Stevie J was a part of Bad Boy Records production team Hitman. In 1997, Stevie J won a Grammy Award for his work on Puff Daddy's debut album. Stevie J was one of the producers on the Love album. Of course he was. Mr. Combs used access to Stevie J and his knowledge of Mr. Jones' admiration of Stevie J to groom and entice Mr. Jones to engage in homosexuality. Mr. Combs went so far to share a video of Stevie J penetrating a Caucasian male. This was done to ease Mr. Jones' anxiety concerning homosexuality, according to Mr. Jones. This is a natural practice in the music industry. Look, even Stevie J is doing it. This is a normal practice in the music industry. So when we tell you that they are putting these men in dresses and forcing them to do these roles and making your favorite singer say that she kisses girls for fun and that she's so gay, I just feel like it's all performative. Like it's all, like it's all so fake. Some of it is not some, but a lot of it, people were groomed to believe that it wasn't, you know, and this, this is your out, this is your out and this is how you speak your truth and this, no, it's not, I promise you. And a lot of the people who you think aren't, those be the ones who really are too, that like go so hard to prove that they're not and da da da. Like these men that we're seeing right here. Anyway. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper five, Meek Mill again, R&B singer six. He performed at the Super Bowl and had successful Vegas res res residency. Usher. But Usher was like, Usher was a kid. And that's what you have to think about too. So yeah, a lot of people keep trying to run. Usher was with Diddy, Usher had sex with Usher gay. Usher was a child. Usher's mother put him in Diddy's custody as a child. 
They was waking up in the morning sharing beds, racing for cereal. Remember what Diddy was saying? What was all of that he was saying? And everybody just stood around in that room, Kevin Hart, everybody was sitting there like, what? It was, a, it was a lot going on in that video. But I remember him saying, oh, me and Usher used to wake up and we used to have cereal and we used to fight. That was my, but no, 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 not like that, man. That was like my brother. Don't get caught up, but it's just like, yo, we want to thank you for hosting the thing, man, man. You, you, it's been a pleasure. You didn't have to do it and you did it. No, 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 I definitely didn't have to do it. I, I definitely didn't have to. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not getting the bed. Uh, you know, shout out to him and what he did. I'm just gonna, if we can, just let's, let's just put the camera a little this way, just so we're not, I don't want my shot to even, like, I don't want it to come close to the bed at all. I, I should look like he fresh off the goddamn plane. I should, I should, I should. Fresh off the guard stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying, but it's my brother for real, we used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the frosted flakes because he used to always get up early with me, and now he's one of the richest stars yo, in the world, and I'm yo, like, what the f*** did Puff just say? Nobody's gonna acknowledge this for me. Puff just said we used to wrestle over the Frosted Flakes and we're streaming live. That was stupid. Listen, that was fucking stupid. Listen, he engaged in sexual intercourse. Intercourse. This is not, this is, this is doing the do with rapper five, Meek Mill. R&B singer six performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. That's Usher. Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. Jones wins producer of the years at the Grammys if he engaged in homosexuality. This is not a joke, you guys. This is what I'm saying. Like, you think that those, when they're sitting there waiting, like, oh, I hope I win, I hope I win. They know already. This is all planned out from the jump. This is not like, oh my gosh. And that's why when Jay-Z goes up there and keeps doing the, my wife didn't, while she's holding 83 Grammys, y'all know that they're not giving her album of the year. He went up there this year and did the same exact thing Kanye did, but he didn't snatch the mic from nobody. He said the same exact thing. Oh my goodness. And the following are screenshots of the video of Stevie J penetrating Caucasian male that Mr. Combs provided to Mr. Jones. This writer is in possession of the video and will provide a copy to the court. Oh my God. Oh my God. On Thanksgiving day, 2022, Mr. Jones was in Mr. Combs house located in Miami, Florida. Young Miami and her female cousins were also present. Mr. Combs was intoxicated and offered cocaine to Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones rejected him and proceeded to walk to the restroom. While using the restroom, young Miami's cousin burst into the bathroom and began groping Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs sent her there to sexually assault Mr. Jones. Women can assault men. I'm so tired. Actually, I want to dedicate a whole video to that. There's so many men, especially in Hollywood, because this is on camera, but like even in like real life, I talk to men all the time and they say like their first encounter was with a babysitter, their mom's friend, a woman that was older than them, their pops or their uncle, their older cousin, somebody set them up with an older woman. You were a victim. That wasn't you losing your virginity. You were assaulted. You were taken advantage of. You were a child. Even if you were a grown man, and you did not consent and a woman still was pulling down you saying after you said no and she's still forcing you trying to coerce you oh you gay if you don't want me you're a victim women can be abusers and assaulters and all that so don't just be like oh i never leave my kid around a man or never. the women will be the first one to go to your kid and be like hi i'm your mommy's friend who sent me come with me come on and because she's like oh my god okay that's not you know that's my mommy's friend other than a man in a van that they keep trying to grooming the people's head don't go with the man with the van with the candy how all the times women have been trafficked it's been another woman oh girl you so pretty you want to come into the club tonight you want to come with me here you let's go get our nails done write you on instagram all the time scoping scoping the scenery checking your your, your, your temperature oh come with me here come with me there oh no i go on trips oh you're not getting a guy to pay for all your stuff let me show you then you find out that it's selling yourself please please that's like young miami they got you with this lifestyle she's a sugar baby she's getting pissed on by diddy i love golden showers nobody loves that babe you're you're traumatized only even the people who have that as their kink it's trauma i promise you nobody just wants to get pissed on somebody pissed on you made you like it and now you're forced to act like this is just and a lot of this stuff be like oh nobody can ever embarrass me because i said i liked it first so if a video come about of me getting on know that i said i was with it i know a lot of girls like this i'm telling you it's yeah it's, it's exhausting and if you're not down with the stuff they're down with they will shame you you got to stop going back you got to stop being in these spaces you already were uncomfortable back when he shot somebody then you were uncomfortable when he was groping your butt and you kept going back and kept letting kk tell you that it's okay it's not okay 
It was never okay. But you wanted you wanted that album of the year, right? So this is where it turns from assault into active participation because now he there's been so many advances you didn't like and I'm not I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just saying to where now you've been groomed to the point that you're a participant and you want the album of the year and then now you got the album of the year. Now you in their graces. They did this for you. Now you can't leave. Now you really want to get out now now because Diddy's be I also we need to keep this in, in mind now since Cassie exposed him Diddy's done you're not getting no more recognition for working with Diddy you know that stuff was happening so now every receipt that I have is now coming out now I'm sorry because you didn't get what you were promised at the end of the deal and that I can't respect because you knew that there were minors around you knew that women were being abused you knew that other men were being abused by him and you didn't speak, think to speak out until things didn't work out for you as she entered the bathroom she dropped to her knees and began performing on Mr. Jones immediately just went in, dropped to her knee. Oh my God. Like what? Mr. Jones pushed her away, exited the bathroom. Young Miami's cousin did not accept Mr. Jones rejection as she proceeded to follow him out of the bathroom. She started undressing and attempting to straddle him to have sex with him in the presence of Mr. Combs and his staff. Once again, Mr. Jones pushed her off. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones was transported from California to New York, Florida, and the United States Virgin Islands. During this time, Jones was forced to solicit sex workers and perform acts to the pleasure of mr combs that's it all these freak offs just like cassie you got to do what to... now i've had to turn down 50 million dollars four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole i was telling yeah. you about <laughs> right uh because p diddy be wanting the body and you gotta tell him no Come you on. got to tell him no I, I did and when young miami was beefing with the asian girl she follows me too but i can't think of her name right now if you're in here girl hey but when they were beefing, Young Miami was like telling her like, oh, you're an eater. If I wanted to get you to come out here and eat me right now, Diddy would fly you out. You'd be on your knees. Carisha, you're a victim. Y'all both are victims, sadly. Like, and, but at least the other girl was aware that Diddy was like abusing her and taking advantage of her and doing stuff. Like, I think she went on like Tasha K or something. I don't know. Young Miami's just trying to act like everything is just all whatever. But she knew back then what Diddy was doing. And she even put it out on Twitter for everybody to say that y'all still didn't even see her true colors back then. The workers that Mr. Combs forced Jones to bring back to his homes on or about February 2nd, 2023. What are we, 2024 now though? This was still all last year. Like this is really recent stuff. <laughs> on or about February 12th, 2023, um, Mr. Jones believes Mr. Combs drugged him. Mr. Jones recalls waking up naked, dizzy, and confused. He was in a bed with two sex workers and Mr. Combs and Mr. Combs. He also recalls aimlessly wandering around the house with no clothes on. That is scary. But again, Still, this happens. Next week comes. Yeah, I'm going back. Did he fly me out? I'm not. I'm not victim blaming. I'm not. I swear to God, I'm not. Especially as someone who like I'm. I'm not. I'm not victim blaming. I promise you. It's this many times you went. Like I just. I don't understand. You gotta tell him no. I understand going back just for um proof like this. If you didn't have proof of any, anything before, so you're like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep pushing it and see what he keeps doing, and I'm gonna collect the proof. Then okay. But some of this really just sounds like you wanted that album of the year. Um, on another occasion in Miami, Florida, on Thanksgiving night, Mr. Combs asked Mr. Jones and DeForest Taylor, who's DeForest Taylor, to enter the studio bathroom. He then asked them for a hundred dollar bill because he wanted them to do cocaine with him. Mr. Jones was scared, but luckily he didn't have a hundred dollar bill, so Mr. Combs waited a little later to do coke with him in Miami. Later that evening, he required Mr. Jones to solicit sex workers from Booby Trap. Mr. Jones did so, so Mr. Combs forced him to engage in the unsolicited. Sex. Mr. Combs provided Mr. Jones with an exclusive bad boy baseball cap and required him to wear it to the booby trap. As a signal to any sex workers, he approached that Mr. Combs was in town and he had sent Mr. Jones to recruit them. So y'all seeing like this is a highly orchestrated situation. Mr. Jones had no desire to visit booby trap on the river. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting workers from booby trap on the river as detailed below mr combs used many tactics to maintain dominion and control of mr jones and then you see the pictures though and you see that the type of pictures the legs open all that stuff and a lot of us and i'm saying us because i'm telling you at one point i was a nova babe and taking pictures of fashion nova doing all that stuff you don't realize how you're being groomed by these other pictures they send you pictures of this girl oh pose like this take a picture like this da, 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 da. then you end up posing like them you're taking pictures you don't realize these are women that are looking for their next trick 
Like they are looking for sugar daddies and pimps and the, they, they're sex workers. They're not regular women. So when you have regular women on Instagram, now it's also normal. You can't weed out who's a sex worker, who's not. This is not liberation. Don't let the city girls convince you that you're just sex positive and you're did it. No, come on. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to intimidate and force Mr. Jones into soliciting and sleeping with these women. Mr. Combs used many tactics to maintain dominion and control over Mr. Jones. He promised him a Grammy for producer of the year for Love Album. He offered him $250,000 to purchase all the instruments he wanted. He loved that number, $250,000. Wasn't that um, Carisha's allowance for every month? He gave him a piece of Carisha's allowance um, to purchase all the instruments he wanted. He promised him ownership of his $20 million property. He promised access to record label executives like defendants. Mr. Combs would often switch up his approach. He would go from promising Mr. Jones the world to threatening Mr. Jones with physical harm. And that's where we get into it. That's what I'm saying. I know he had to be threatening him. He had to be scared at some point because yeah. Combs threatened to eat Mr. Jones face eat his face and inform Mr. Jones that he is willing to kill his mother if he must in order to get what he wants. So he wouldn't think twice to harm Mr. Jones. Janice, Christina, Janice, come in here, sweetie. Um, how do you feel about your son saying he would kill you? I mean, she would kill him. She sacrificed him. Not like you want to be technical, threw him to the wolves. Um, but that's so crazy. He would eat his face. Let's not skip over that. Let's not skip over that little drip. Once again, once again, we are entering conspiracy territory where it's not a conspiracy. Is this real? Like, is this real life? This is real life. Everything is coming full circle. These are things that we've been talking about. Yo, I'm so grateful for everybody who's been here with me from day one, because I'm telling y'all lately. But y'all see what my last YouTube video with um, Brett Cooper and she was saying how, oh, it's so good to see people waking up. Eat his face is crazy though, y'all. I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs solicit drugs and engage in illicit sex acts with minors and sex workers, Lord. On or about July 2nd, 2023 in California, Mr. Combs had a listening party at his home. Present at this party was an R&B artist, number nine, Jay Combs, sex workers, and some underage girls. Are you gonna give me who number nine is already? Um, he is a Grammy award winning R&B singer who had trouble with, uh, Chris Brown again? Chris. Chris. We need a new version of Same Girl with Chris Brown and Drake. Clearly can't stay away from underage women. That's what we need. We, Cause we need Same Girl from them. What are, why, what are we talking about? And for the record, because I don't know why people think, because I said, in which I do still stand by, that Chris's first, first encounter with the law and this whole Rihanna thing was a setup. I still stand by that. I think it was. I never once mentioned, I never once mentioned Karuchi. Well, well, let's talk about it too. Karuchi went back a thousand times and we know when you're being da da da, but she liked, she liked the thrills and she liked everything. The only reason she left and out her own mouth was because he had a baby on her. Chris Brown and Karuchi would still be together and she would have a baby right now if little royalty never came to be. He cheated on her with somebody who was a close to both of them. Probably had them doing threesomes, a bunch of freak offs. She was probably doing freak offs with him and you know, that's that's that industry. So you cool until something happens where the boundary is caught, crossed. Wendy Williams too. Her husband was cheating on her for years. She knew infidelity is one thing. You having a baby with another woman, that's another thing. And a lot of women, that'd be the line. That's why I don't really you know, like super hold it over his head or because all the women, Rihanna went back a thousand times. She wanted to fight Karuchi over him. Well, he cheated on Karuchi with Rihanna, told her she was going, he was going to the store, ended up front row at the basketball game with Rihanna on live television after telling Karuchi he was going to the store. And they both fought each other over that, was sending subs at each other on Twitter. Rihanna was calling her a rice cake. She was calling Rihanna, she was using fake Bayesian accents. It was a time to be alive on Twitter back then, okay? Yeah, so we remember that. The North remembers. Just like women in the hood, every day. I see women fight over dudes who punch them in their face while they're trying to get their sandwiches from the corner store. Like, and they still love them, and that's their baby daddy, and that's the love of their life. And I'm gonna mind my business. That's just how, I, I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. I treat all of this stuff the same way. Once it goes too far, once there's kids involved with all of this stuff, I'm always going to speak up. But as long as a woman wants to, st I, I can't, I'm sorry. And if you want to get out, I'm going to support you a thousand percent. But the women who just, a lot of them don't want out. 
They don't. They want their man. They want to feel like they won. And you can't risk your life trying to save those people. Like young Miami right now, she don't want to be saved. She wants to be ignored. She wants to be out of the media. She don't want none of this falling back on. That's why she's running around with Ari trying to make people forget about her and Diddy. So they just run around together being fake lesbians. And yes, I know they're both gay. They date women, whatever. Yeah, but right now this is a distraction and they're using it to their advantage. Thank you. So present at this party was Chris Brown, Justin Combs, sex workers, and underage girls. The event, so, and this is 2023. This is last year. Even in the event that maybe, oh, Justin and, you know, them had the underage girls. We're all 30 now. Your sons, your oldest child is no longer even underage. But when you're in that life, that's what happens. And it's it's sad. The event began at 7 p.m. Mr. Combs requested female sex workers and requested Mr. Jones to solicit them. An hour later, sex workers appeared. And this is what I'm saying. Come on, Mr. Jones. Why? Everything he tell you to do, you do. Um, in addition to sex workers, there was at least five women in the crowd that were under the age of 16, very on brand. I, I'm, I'm telling y'all, if I was still 16, 17 in college and this was right now was back then, I, me and my friends probably would have been some of the underage girls in the crowd, which is sad. And even though I've like never done anything in these like settings or like been taken advantage of or, you know, it, not in these situations, I still shouldn't have been there. Like that was the thing. Like somebody should have been a responsible adult to check IDs or ask who, cause we looked young. We looked young as hell. We looked like we were trying to be grown. Like we shouldn't have been there. It's just somebody should have did their due diligence, but they don't care because they like that. And if you don't tell, I won't tell, right? Yeah, it's not, it's, it's a nasty place. And then parents were sending their kids to go live with these artists at that. Like we had Quinlan Blackwell living with Diplo at 19. And then when I called that out, everybody called me a hater. A few months passed. She's crying on the internet saying that she was groomed by a 40 year old man and everybody around her made her think it was okay. A red flag is a red flag. Like I'm, Mr. Combs forced all the women to drink laced Deleon liquor. That happens a lot too. A lot of the time in the clubs too, you come to, you go to a certain person's section, they'll lace the bottle. So you'd be like, oh, I poured my own drink. The bottle's laced. They'll drink their own lace drink. You think I'm not even playing these are strong they they're like monsters they'll lace their own drink and then give you that drink so you're like oh no i saw him drinking his drink all night he's laced too he's just used to it that happens often that's why you got to bring your own alcohol if you're gonna drink and you're gonna be in settings bring your own alcohol don't let anybody open it touch it tap it, none of that don't then when you once you pour that you get one of those top things and you put that over your thing and you protect your straw too because they might just try to slip it through your straw depending on how big it is or what it is i'm telling y'all he believes that he laced the liquor with ecstasy mr combs did not check the identification of any of these underage girls like i just said the presence of these underage women made mr jones very uncomfortable he attempted to leave mr combs forced him to stay mr combs went as far as to take his car keys to prevent him from leaving after being forced to drink laced de Leon shots mr jones began and feeling lightheaded and recalls passing out waking up around 4 a.m following morning naked with a sex worker sleeping next to him screenshots of a video from that night are embedded below mr jones believes that mr combs was grooming him to pass off to his friends he was this fear became reality when mr combs introduced mr jones to cuba gooding jr while they were on mr combs yacht and what happened with cuba gooding jr didn't like a girl say he groped her at like a, a restaurant in Manhattan or something, like a rooftop bar. Cuba Gooding was charged with sexual abuse and forcible touching after a woman who later identified herself as Kelsey Harbert told detectives that he had touched her breast inside Magic Hour, a rooftop bar in Moxie Times Square Hotel. Yeah, he'd be groping people and touching people, so this is clearly on brand for him. What the heck, bro? During the introduction, Mr. Combs suggested that Cuba get to know Jones better and he left them alone in a makeshift studio on the yacht. Cuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones's legs, his upper and inner thighs, his groin, the small of his back near his neck buttocks and shoulders so jones was extremely uncomfortable and proceeded to lean away from mr gooding jr he rejected his advances and mr gooding jr did not stop until mr jones forcibly pushed him away the following is a screenshot of the encounter with cuba gooding jr why is he looking at him like that though mm. throughout his time with mr combs mr jones was under an implied work for hire agreement he was not compensated for his time living with mr combs or for the songs he produced as evidence he was listed as a producer for the following songs on the love album deliver me stay part one reaching what's love stay a while moments need somebody homecoming and tough love mr combs and the record labels all benefited from mr jones's work they failed to compensate mr jones for his work as a result mr combs and defendants 
the labels, were all unjustly enriched at the expense of Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones attempted to work with Mr. Combs to secure his publishing and royalty rights for the work he completed on the Love album. Mr. Combs only offered Mr. Jones 29,000 for 13 months, thousands of hours of work, nine songs that made it to the Love album. Mr. Jones was willing to take $50,000 on his publishing and royalties. Mr. Combs' self-serving greed would not allow him to pay Mr. Jones an additional 21,000. Mr. Combs' deceptive business practices became so bad that Mr. Jones was left with no choice other than to make a public plea on social media for Mr. Combs to pay for his work. So again, this is more about the money than the abuse. I feel like maybe we wouldn't have heard about this if he was paid correctly. But nonetheless, I'm still glad that we did get this side of the story, you know, because this is a lot. After publicly requesting that Mr. Combs do the right thing and pay him fairly, Mr. Jones received an onslaught of threatening messages from Stevie J and Love Records A&R. Mr. Combs used his power and influence to threaten and intimidate Mr. Jones. According to Mr. Jones, Mr. Combs is very forceful and demanding. Mr. Combs does not take no for an answer and would often threaten to inflict bodily harm on Mr. Jones if Mr. Jones did not comply with his demand. As the A&R of Love Records, DeFrost Taylor did not require Mr. Jones or any of the other creative artists to sign an NDA. Well, now we know why this is coming out so fast because this all just happened last year. Clearly no NDA in sight. He thought like, oh, well, you know, I can just do this to people. On another occasion, while standing in Mr. Combs' bedroom, Mr. Jones was forced to watch as Mr. Combs displayed his guns and bragged about getting away with shooting people. Mr. Combs shared that he was responsible for the shooting in the nightclub in New York City with rapper Shine. He shared that artist and Mr. Combs' girlfriend at the time, Jennifer Lopez, aka J-Lo, carried the gun into the club for him and passed him the gun after he got into an altercation with another individual. These statements reinforced Mr. Jones' fear of Mr. Combs and he felt like he could not tell him no. And you gotta tell him no. Mr. Combs consistently Consistently made it clear that he has immense power in the music industry and with law enforcement. Like I told you, the cops, the people are like, well, you're still the cops. The cops be in on it. There'll be thousands of reports before these about the same person. The cops are sleeping under the rug. They pay them. They give them stuff. They, listen, you'll go to a party at one of these things and the same cops who you reported to will be in the back at the VIP chilling in their regular clothes. Mr. Combs made it clear that his head of security, Fahim Muhammad, had the power to make people and problems disappear. Did Fahim Muhammad, AKA Mr. Muhammad, did he make him disappear? Mr. Combs instructs his staff to always contact Mr. Muhammad if they are ever pulled over by the police in Miami or California. Upon information and belief, Mr. Muhammad spoke with LAPD after G was shot. The LAPD was in CRS and witnessed the blood and restroom. And they went with the bogus claim that the shooting of G occurred outside the studio. This was all thanks to Mr. Muhammad's connections with law enforcement. That's what I was gonna say. What cops really looked at that situation and was like, yeah, yeah, this not, this looks about right. He got shot outside. And this is why I tell y'all the, the reports, y'all be like, oh, well, the police report says X, Y, and Z. You can't trust these people. Mr. Jones had no reason not to believe Mr. Combs because he had seen firsthand through the shooting of G and the su subsequent silence of the LAPD and the media that Mr. Combs indeed had the power to harm him. Can we get into Kim though? Please give me some, please tell me. Please, I just want to hear somebody prove it because we all have, we, like, we have that feeling. We all know, I just need somebody to fully out to say this is the proof. I mean, I feel like we're getting the proof pretty much. Like we can see he's making people disappear. Imagine if this is what he was saying to him, imagine what he was threatening Cassie with. I need to read through those. The LAPD spent hours in CRS after the shooting, yet there were no arrests. Mr. Jones witnessed the LAPD in the restroom pictured above, yet no arrests were made. The morning after the shooting, Mr. Jones and several others arrived at CRS and G's blood was still on the floor of the restroom and Mr. Combs hired a cleaning crew to clean it up. According to Mr. Jones, whenever defendant Grange visited Mr. Combs at his homes, it would be in the evening. He and Mr. Combs would disappear for a few hours in Mr. Combs' bedroom. Defendant Grange sponsored and attended several love album listening parties at Mr. Combs' home in Los Angeles, California. These parties were sponsored by defendants MR, LR, and UMG. These parties had sex workers and underage girls present. During these parties, defendant Grange knew or should have known that Combs was drugging the attendees through lace bottles of Deleon, tequila, and Ciroc vodka. It is no secret that Mr. Combs had specific bottles of alcohol designated for females and other bottles designated for his staff, his artists, and himself. This fact was detailed by former artists and bodyguards of Mr. Combs. As a sponsor of these events, the defendant Grange had a duty and obligation to ensure that workers and underage girls were not present and that Mr. Combs was not spiking the alcohol with 
with date rape drugs. On the YouTube channel, The Art Dialogue, former bodyguard Gene Deal exposed Mr. Combs' pill mixing method used to spike cranberry juice and orange juice. According to Mr. Deal, Mr. Combs would place ecstasy in the juices. Former artist Mark Curry exposed Mr. Combs spiking bottles of Moet in the VIP section of the nightclubs. Mr. Combs would have a set of Moet champagnes for his artists and a set for the women. This is crazy. And everybody be fiending to be in the club with a rapper in a section. It's scary, man. She is to Diddy what Ghislaine Maxwell is to Jeffrey Epstein absolutely she's the handler yikes that's what i'm saying it's always a woman she probably makes girls feel comfortable too you know how many things she's probably swept under the rug it, evidence she's probably taken from young girls and like coerced them because it's just a woman <sighs> it's getting spooky okay according to mr jones during the 13 months he traveled with mr combs he witnessed quorum openly order her assistance to keep mr combs high off gummies and pills she is. She's Harley Pasternak. What Harley Pasternak is to his clients, especially Kanye, is what she is to him too. She's instructing people to keep him high as well. That's it. Okay. And this is why he's running around thinking that he's in his 20s running around with, you know, Carisha and she's holding poppy signs. Who sold Carisha to Diddy? Why did Diddy, what did Diddy want with her? It was important to KK to have Combs drug of choice immediately ready when he asked for it. As the chief of staff defendant, KK was instrumental on organizing and executing the RICO enterprise, Lord. KK had the following individuals execute the following tasks for the enterprise. Stevie J recruits sex workers and attends parties in free golfs. We have a video of Mr. Combs and Stevie J at a strip club Mr. Combs is recording the video while coaching and training plaintiff Jones on how to recruit. The Justin Combs solicits prostitutes, underage girls, and sex workers would engage in freak offs. Bringing your son into this stuff. Yo, this is crazy. Brendan Paul works as Mr. Combs' mule. He acquires and distributes drugs and guns. Lord. Thanksgiving 2022, and Mr. Combs offered Jones cocaine. Mr. Combs funded and used his affiliation with local gangs and gang leaders who would frequent his homes in LA. What is with the face eating? Bragging about having law enforcement under control, bragging about murdering people, and bragging about bribing witnesses and jurors. While living and traveling with Mr. Combs, he discovered that Mr. Combs has hidden cameras in every room of his home. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs has recordings of the defendants Lucian Charles Grange in Ethiopia, as well as other celebrities, music label executives, politicians, and athletes. Politicians. Didn't Mayor Adams give him the key to the city? Sitting up there throwing their little hearts up. That happened. These individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent. Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that attended his freak off parties and his house parties. Everyone. He has everyone in compromising position. Keep that in mind. Every so now we gotta go like, we gotta just go look through Diddy Instagram and see who he partying with. He got Krishan in compromising situations. Remember she was on that big old bed in his backyard and it was, he kept kissing her and he was all, that, and he's giving her her flowers. Krishan ain't done nothing to get no flowers. Please, they pimped her out too. Due to this treasure trove of evidence he has in his possession, Mr. Combs believes that he is above the law and untouchable, of course. Mr. Combs employs Jose Cruz as his IT director. This writer has spoken to several former employees of Mr. Combs who confirmed that Jose Cruz is the gatekeeper to all of Mr. Combs' recordings. Jose Cruz intentionally hides behind the camera, away from social media, due to all the incriminating acts he was required to record for Mr. Combs. Okay, we're on 34. Oh my God, there's 73 of these. Yeah, so we're on the 34th page right now. This is a lot, there's a lot going on. So I'm going to stop it here. I will try to get the other half of this up soon. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this half of the video. I love you, I will see you in the next video. Time, I'm gonna sip this cup one more time.